Ready? Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to go over with this, ladies and gentlemen, is that I, I have the cosine of 2x minus cosine of x equals 0. So what we did kind of a couple class periods ago is we learned how to solve, right? First we learned how to simplify, then we learned how to verify, then we learned how to solve. Now we got a little bit out of the way by using sum and difference formulas. But if you guys go back to this, remember, we just need to isolate our variable. And there's two different ways we learned how to solve for an equation. We first learned either reverse order of operations, right? You just undo what's happening. Undo addition, subtraction. Undo square roots. Undo whatever else you need to. Um, then the other way that we learned to solve is by using factoring, right? You factor, get it to zero product property, and then you can solve from there. So by looking at this problem, um, we can't combine them. They're not like terms. And I can't like really even factor the factoring in out um, is going to work this. So what I'm going to look into doing with this is because my angles are different multiple angles, so it's going to be diff difficult as far as factoring out a cosine. But what I can go ahead and do is I can maybe say, how can I rewrite cosine of 2x? So there's a whole bunch of formulas which we have for our multiple angles. And the first multiple angle formula that we're going to write on is the cosine of 2x is equal to, uh, what I had to write in there? Huh? Yeah, I don't want to use that one, though. I'm going to use, yeah, there's a couple of them. I'm going to use cosine squared minus sine squared. OK? So there's a couple of equations up here, Marco, that you want to write down. Um, and one of them is, is having the cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x. All right? And there's actually three versions that we have. Yes? What do you mean, how did I say like to use it? What, like, how do you know to use that? It doesn't matter. It, you can use any, of, any one that you want to. But why did you want to choose that? Why did I want to choose that one? We'll talk about when we're looking at different problems. First of all, the formula, we'll talk about where I get the formulas um, to go on there. But all I'm looking into <laughs> is with these problems, I have cosine squared x. When you look at the formulas that you have, there's three of them you can choose from. It's not going to make a difference. Some of them are just going to be easier than others. Okay, So I'm just showing you this problem. And I'll, and I'll show you maybe how it would work using the other problems, or the, using the other formulas. All right. Um, the first thing we need to look at, though, is if I plug this in, what I want you guys to understand is cosine of 2x, if this equals that, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to plug this in for my formula. So now I have cosine squared of x minus sine squared of x minus cosine of x equals 0. Just put that way around. So does everybody see what I did? Yep. Now, what I can do is, as far as solving, the important thing about that was I converted it now to all x. You know, now it's all cosines of x. However, still for a solving case, I don't really have anything that I'm really um, I can't still have sines and cosines, um, so it's still going to be kind of difficult just to solve. So I know that sine and cosine by Pythagorean identities are related to each other. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to go with cosine squared of x minus 1 minus cosine squared of x minus cosine of x equals 0. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to replace sine squared of x with 1 minus cosine squared of x, right? We've done a lot of practice with that. And the reason why I can do that now is now that's going to, now I have a whole equation that only deals with cosine. So apply the distributive property. And what you guys can see is now I'm going to have a factoring problem. But do you kind of see? Do you kind of see what I was? I know it's not as evident when you first start, but in my vision, I can see that's what I want to kind of go through. So it's kind of hard to, you know, explain what you're working with because there's different avenues you can go about. But this is a good port to get to. Here, it's really hard to get get anywhere. Even here, you're not going to do much until you get it down to a point here because now I can solve by factoring.
Okay? So then you have 2 cosine of x. I'm factoring it. 2 cosine of x and then times cosine of x. I know it's going to give me 2 cosine squared of x. Then I need to make sure um, what two terms are going to be on the outside. Well, if I multiply by, um, oops, sorry, that becomes, that is 1, that one's positive. Positive 1 times negative 1, give you there. This becomes a 2 cosine, 2 cosine of x, and that one becomes a negative 2 cosine of x. Cosine of x. Yeah, that's negative 2. There you go. OK, good stuff. So now we have a difference of 2. Now we can simplify saying 2 cosine of x plus 1 equals 0 and cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. Therefore, subtract 1. 2 cosine of x equals negative 1 divided by 2. Cosine of x equals negative 1 half. And over here, add 1. And you could say cosine of x equals positive 1. Now, to evaluate for these, we're only going to evaluate, we're only finding the solutions on 0 to 2 pi. So we go back to the unit circle. We say cosine is equal to 1 at our angle 0. And it's equal to negative 1 half uh, cosine, which is the x value. So it's going to be equal to negative 1 half at this angle and at this angle. So this angle is uh, 2 pi over 3, 3 pi. And then this angle would be 4 pi over 3. So therefore, you can now say on the unit circle, x is going to be equal to, for at negative 1 half, it's equal to 2 pi over 3. And x is equal to 4 pi over 3. And x is equal to 1 when cosine of x, when your angle x is equal to 0. Okay, We're not adding the 2 pi, pi's and stuff like that, because the question says, find all the solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So I'm only going to include the answer that I can find on one revolution in the unit circle, rather than adding all the possible solutions. OK, 